The SMP had the best and the worst day this year in the market, closing out the week up 3.2%. And when we look at the external market factors, we can see as a whole, they are counting on the Fed to ward off any recession concerns with effect a sizable interest rate cuts. And when we look at the detail, we can actually see traders are pricing in a half point September cut, followed by aggressive easing around 2.2 percentage points right off what the Fed was expecting by the end of next year. Now, this is very bullish for real estate investment trusts. And today we are looking at six that are undervalued. Now, how we got to that, we want to explain before we jump straight in. So we've run it through the screener. The first thing that we want to point out is we want safe or very safe dividends. Therefore, ones that tell us a cut is unlikely or highly unlikely. The next thing we're running through our screener is an undervaluation signal, which is dividend yield theory. This is when the yield that the company is offering sits above the five year average, which is always a great sign. Now, today we have 14 that actually match these criteria, and we're going to run through six of these that we do believe you should consider in your portfolios today. Now, what we mean by dividend yield theory, just before we do dive in, for example, WP Carey, this is a double undervaluation signal as the yield is higher than the five year average, meaning you are getting more money than what you would over the five years as a whole. And we also want a cheaper valuation than the five year average. Again, as we can see for this particular REIT, 11.8, which is lower than the five year rolling of 14.7. So let's dive into the first one today. Now it is none other than Realty Income Corporation, ticker symbol O. Now they do pay on a monthly basis, which is one of the attractive features of this company. We also still get a triple buy rating, even though it does currently trade towards the upper end of the 52 week range. The yield around 5.24%, a P to FFO of around 14.4, which we will compare to the sector as a whole. And over the last 12 months, it is up around 2%. We notice a very strong resurgence over the last month, up 14%. Over the last 10 years, however, it is up 39%, but we can see not quite near that pre-COVID high of $80. Now, one thing that is attractive about this company, other than the fact that it does pay on a monthly basis, is the high yield of 5.24%. Remember when the Fed does start to cut those interest rates, which are currently sitting around the 5 to 5.25 mark, is that a lot of money on the sidelines will move into nice high yielding stocks and realty income will most certainly be one of those. Now, when we look at the underlying metrics, we have an 80 safe score on the dividend and they have the more recent increase at 3%. Remember, on this channel, we want to see a minimum of four. Ideally, that is just to keep up in line with inflation. And as we said, everyone we're going through today is either safe or very safe, which means a dividend cut is unlikely or for the very safe, highly unlikely. Now, in terms of the last recession, a lot of people in the community do believe we will be heading into one soon. So we're going to look at the key metrics from the Great Recession 0709. In fact, Realty Income increased the dividend. They had above average growth at negative 1%, which was above the average of the S&P's negative 12. And we can see they did outperform the S&P, negative 43, S&P itself, negative 55. Now, when we look over the longer term, 3% increase, as we said, over the last full year, 3% over the last five years, over the last 20 years, 5%, which is nice, marginally higher than the inflation rate. And they're also a dividend aristocrat, 25 plus years of consecutive increases with 55 years of paying a dividend without a reduction. Then, as we mentioned, dividend yield theory, we have that undervaluation signal. The yield does sit higher as well as the forward P to AFFO does sit below the five year rolling. When we do compare it, it is marginally lower than real estate sector of 14.6, which means today's episode, even after the resurgence over the last month, realty income still has a triple undervaluation signal. As always, bear in mind, we will look at this in more detail when we get to the valuation aspect. We then run it through the adjusted funds from Operation Payout. Remember, whilst we do like to draw your attention to the free cash flow for other companies, for REITs, a lot more volatile. So on the AFFO payout, below 90% is the preference, below 90% every single year, in fact, decreasing. And over the next 12 months at 74%, a good signal that, as we already mentioned, the dividend does look to be safe. 
We then get to the AFF per share, very similar to the free cash flow that we want to see consistent increases over the longer term. In fact, that is what we get. And again, it is expected to continue over the next 12 months in that upwards trajectory. We then look at the sales growth. Now for REITs, 5 to 10%. Again, we get a lot better than that on a year-on-year -year basis, 22% in the more recent period. And when we look at the AFFO per share growth, very nice to note, around the mid digits every single year, 2% however in 2023, nice to see over the next 12 months around 4% anticipated. Keeping on with these underlining metrics, their total sales numerically has more than quadrupled from 0.9 to 4.1 billion. And one thing, as always, we will highlight this throughout. REITs will more often than not dilute your position as a shareholder, as we can see here. And they need to do this as they do retain a little of those internally generated cash flows after paying out the dividends. Some will dilute your position more than others. Realty income definitely dilutes it at a very rapid rate in comparison to the sector as a whole. ROIC, remember, we want to see 10% or more for typical companies. Give us that faith. Management are able to effectively allocate their capital. For REITs, 3 to 5%, pretty much what we do see here, although at the lower end over the more recent years for realty income. Margins also look very healthy. We would like to see it back up to around the 40 to 50% mark. 42% in 2023. And finally, we get to one of the most important metrics, the net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, below five for REITs. And these are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Now, 6.05 in 2023, it is above the 5.5. In fact, over the last 10 years, straddling around that, one very nice key takeaway, 5.13, so a massive drop expected over the next 12 months and when you couple this with the AFFO payout ratio being around the mid 70s understandable why we do get a safe score for realty income now let's jump into the valuation model as always if you do enjoy the content value is being provided smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop now our intrinsic value is 66 dollars in today's episode how we got to this well typically on this channel we run through every single one of these models in our deep dives getting straight to it for today's episode with a current price of around 60 50 we always use a margin of safety now we always start off at 10 percent and we use that and execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria wide moat strong financial metrics and good forward-looking data well, look, if you believe that for realty income is pretty much a buy around the price today at $60, but also factor in with rate cuts coming, a lot of money that's either in the sidelines or in savings accounts will now move into the market looking for high yields. So realty income, as well as the other REITs today, could highly benefit. Now, in terms of the price target, Wall Street $67.50. They do see upside of 12%, which maybe you might argue is attractive because you're getting an interest on a monthly basis around 5 to 6%, an upside projected of 12%, an MOS of 10%. And as we mentioned, with the environment we are moving in with the interest, it could be highly attractive. As always, let us know your thoughts as we go along these today. We also want to let you know today we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want access to this or any others completely free by clicking on the pinned comment below. And we have also released our 35 undervalued stocks for August. So you can also grab that run through each one. And we also talk about those that come within our own portfolio. Moving on to the next REIT, we have Vici Properties with another triple buy rating. One that trades in the mid to upper end of the 52 week range with a forward yield of 5.31%. Now we just want to point out, unlike Realty Income, Vici pays on a quarterly basis. P to FFO of around 12. And over the last year, the performance now sits pretty much flat. But when we look over the last month, again, up around 13%. Over the last five years as well, up around 48 Now, in terms of dividend safety, we have a 50 borderline safe. Now, we have made an exception to that in today's episode, as we do believe this is one of the more attractive ones, and we will run through why. In terms of dividend growth, well, 6.4%, so very attractive. One of the highest growing companies in terms of the REIT space at that very strong rate. And ultimately, for those that want to understand, a borderline safe score means a moderate risk of a dividend cut over a full economic cycle. But when we do look at the information, we do disagree with this point. Now, this company listed after the Great Recession, so no comparative data. And one of the things we like about this company is the mid-single digit increase with a 10% increase to the dividend over the last five years. And as we can see, they have just been increasing those dividends for the last five years. 
Then when we take a look at dividend yield theory, we get that undervaluation signal, the yield 5.3 above the five-year rolling, as well as the forward P to FFO sitting below the five-year average. And we can see marginally below the real estate sector. So again, a triple undervaluation signal similar to realty income. Then we get to the AFFO, well below 75 for hotel REITs, pretty much around that level consistently, expected marginally lower over the next 12 months. So that is already a good sign in terms of the growth continuing to the dividend. AFFO per share, again, consistent increases over the last few years, expected to continue that trajectory over the next 12 months. And when we look at the sales growth over the last few years, much more significant than the 5 to 10% we want to see as a minimum. And nice to note, the growth also looks very strong over the last four years. Three of them have been at 11%, and the one that hasn't at 6% still looks very good. Although we do notice a bit of a slowdown over the next 12 months at 3%. Numerically then, over the last six years, going from 900 million to 3.61 billion and very similar to realty income they dilute your position as a shareholder at a very rapid rate roic looking very strong much better than realty income around the five to eight percent with eight percent in fact in the more recent year and when we do look at the margins again very attractive even though they are inconsistent still looking very strong at around 92 in the more recent year now one of the reasons why it does get the borderline safe score is because this 3.5 is lowered when we are specific for hotel REITs. However, if we use these same results just for REITs in general, it would be around 5.5. Now, what we do note, 5.86 in 2023. Nice to note, it is anticipated to drop to 5.41 over the next 12 months. So it is moving in the right direction. But again, do bear this in mind. This is where that borderline safe score comes from. Whereas if we just use the criteria that we use for REITs, it is below 5.5. Now, in terms of the valuation, first thing to note, our intrinsic value of $39 is higher than Wall Street's forecast of 36, where they see upside of 16%. Now, in terms of the MOS, well, at 10%, it is a buy up $35, at 15, around 33, and we keep going till it's near the current trading price. So we still see this as an attractive opportunity, 20% MOS with 16% upside. And as always, you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below and running through your own numbers, whether it's for Vici Properties or any other companies you're interested in or on the watch list. We move on to Alexandria Real Estate Equities with a double buy and a hold from Quant. This one is trading in the midpoint of the 52-week range. Again, a nice yield, 4.6%, a P to FFO forward-looking of 12 over the last year, now it is down around 7%. Over the last 10 years, up around 46 We can see all-time highs sitting around the $223 mark in December 2021, nearly double the current trading price. So in terms of dividend score, well, 76 looks to be safe and a nice above inflationary increase over the last full year. Then when we take a look at the key metrics, we'll have to point out they cut the dividend during the Great Recession. They did have marginally above average growth, but they did trail the S&P negative 68%. Nice to note, over the last five years, the growth has been at 6%. Over the last 20, at a minimum, they are increasing it in line with inflation. We then take a look, they do have 13 years of consecutive increases. As we can see, they did cut that dividend in 2008 as well as 2009. Then we move on to dividend yield theory, as we mentioned, each one undervalued pretty strongly in this case, 4.58 with the average over the last five years at 2.72 and the forward P to FFO significantly lower than the average, although we do point out it is pretty much in line with the sector as a whole. Then we move on to the FFO payout where we see it consistently below 90%, so that is a good sign in terms of the dividend safety. Now, whilst the FFO has been a little bit inconsistent, we do note over the longer term, which is what we want to see, moving in the right direction and expected to increase strongly over the next 12 months to $7.69. So as we continue, when we want to look at these sales growth, we see very consistently around the mid-teens to the low 20. So that is a strong sign there. We love to see that. And we do have to point out two of the last 10 years have been negative in terms of AFFO, but the last two years looking strong, 6 to 8%, next 12 months, 11%. Love to see double digit growth to the AFFO for these REITs. Then when we look at it from a numerical perspective, nice to see four times growth from 0.73 to 2.89. But again, unfortunately, they do dilute your position. It is just the way that REITs do work. But you could argue this is slower than both Vici as well as Realty Income in terms of diluting your position. 
ROIC on the less attractive side, 2% over the last four years. Again, we want to see 3 to 5% at a bare minimum, something just to factor in. And you can always add a few more percentage points on the MOS level. Operating margin in the mid 20s to mid 30s year on year, not too bad, although we do want to see it go upwards for operating efficiency than moving downwards. And then when we get to the net debt to EBITDA, remember below 5.5 for a generalization for REIT. Again, straddling above that, it just tells you the environment that REITs are currently in. They do have a lot of debt and we can see this number is fairly high, 5.95, but it is anticipated to come down marginally, still above that maximum level that we want to see. So do bear that into consideration. Now, our intrinsic value, $142, not dissimilar from Wall Street's 139, their upside of 23%. Definitely one that they would say a strong consideration to the REIT portfolio. At 10% MOS, we'll buy at $128. Then we keep going. And in today's episode, we can see a 20% margin of safety for ARE with Wall Street indicating 23% upside. Do give us your thoughts on this one. It does look fairly attractive purely just on the MOS and the upside. We then move on to Prologis, the largest REIT where we have a double buy rating and a hold from Quant. Trading in the mid to upper end of the 52 week range, one of the lower yields today at 3.2% and a P to FFO of 22.5. Now over the last year, pretty much flat performance. Over the last 10 years though, if you had invested in Prologis, you would have outperformed the S&P up 197%. Bear in mind, though, this doesn't include dividends reinvested, so that would be up higher. And we can see all-time highs sitting around the $170 mark. We get a safe score here of 61. Love to see this double-digit increase just this year in February at 10%. And when we look at the last recession, pretty much similar to ARE, they did cut that dividend. They had significantly below average growth and massively trailed the S&P negative 84%. Now, what we notice over the last five years, they have been increasing the dividend at a very nice rate at 13%. But due to the cuts they have had over the last 20 years, 0% would be the average. And we do note 10 years of consecutively increasing that dividend. Then when we take a look at dividend yield theory, 3.15. So nice to note above the average. And we can also see even though the forward P to FO does sit pretty high at 26 and above the sector that we will now come to see, it is still lower than the five year at 28.7, which does tell us this typically trades at a very high valuation price. As we mentioned, real estate is much lower at 14.6. In terms of the AFFO, well, below 75, again, industry specific for industrial REITs, pretty much below that every single year, although anticipated to climb up to 83 over the next 12 months. And when we move to the AFFO per share, very strong growth over the last 10 years. We do know over the more recent year, it did drop slightly, and that is anticipated to continue again to 464 over the next 12 months. Then when we look at sales growth, very large growth, although pretty inconsistent on a year on year basis. In terms of the more recent year, unfortunately, it was a negative 1% drop to the AFFO. But prior to that, double digit every single year or thereabouts. So very strong over the next 12 months, anticipated 6% growth. And we can see numerically, this is pretty much quadrupled over the last 10 years. And you could argue not as rapid as the first two Realty Income and Vici in terms of share dilution. We then move on to the ROIC. Nice to note the consistency around the 3 to 4%. That is pretty much the bare minimum that we want to see for this real estate investment trust. And nice to report the operating margin has been increasing. We do get to see those operating efficiencies. Now, finally, as always, we end on the net debt to EBITDA below 5, so lower than the 5.5 for the industrials. Straddles around that year on year. Nice to see. Hopefully, if they can execute on this, it is coming down to 4.78 over the next 12 months. Then we get to the valuation. Now, 133, marginally lower than Wall Street at 138, who see 13% upside. And when we do run it through at a 10% MOS, pretty much around the current trading price. So if you buy this at $120, you are getting 10% MOS with 13% upside. For some people, that may be sufficient. For others, they may be looking for a little bit larger on the MOS side. And if you want around 15%, that would be 113 at 20% around 107. We then move on to Rexford Industrial Realty with a double buy and a hold from Quant, trading in the midpoint of the 52 week range, 3.35% yield, 21 on the P to FFO forward looking basis, negative 7% over the last year, 
over the last 10 years, so far one of the strongest significant outperformance of the S&P, up 251%, although we do see all-time highs around $81, nearly double the current trading price. A very safe dividend score at 81. I'd love to see this again. 9.9% .9 increase to the dividend in February. And when we take a look at the dividend growth overall, strong numbers here. 19% over the last five years, 22% over the last 10 and we can see 10 years of consecutively increasing those dividends no surprises then strong double undervaluation signal on the yield and on the forward p to ffo this one does trade historically at a very rich valuation and no surprises significantly above real estate sector at 14.6 on the ffo payout well below 90 percent is the preference remember below 90 is what we see 83 anticipated over the next 12 months and when we look at the FFO per share, pretty much consistently increasing on a year-on-year -year basis. No surprises, increase anticipated over the next 12. Then when we look at the sales growth, even though it has been slowing down, still significantly higher than the 5-10% to 10 we want to see. And love to see this FFO per share growth looking very strong, 8% anticipated over the next 12 months. Numerically speaking though, more than 10 times growth over the last 10 years, but very rapid share dilution. You can stick this within Realty Income and Vici and put them in the same bracket. ROIC, whilst it did start off very low in 2014-2015, has been increasing and nice to see at least the 3% we want to see in 2023. Margins also looking very strong. We get to see that increasing operating efficiency, always a great sign. And on a net debt to EBITDA level, below 5.5 pretty consistently from 2018 probably the first time we've seen this today anticipated to increase though over the next 12 months but still well below that 5.5 now in terms of the valuation around 63 dollars we can see that current price at just under 50 dollars we put a mos of 10 percent well a buy at 57 dollars as we keep going we can see in today's episode you're not getting the 25 percent mos just yet it is sitting around the 20 percent in today's video and we can in fact see wall street to see price target lower than our intrinsic value upside of 13%. So a quick recap, 20% MOS and 13% with a price target of $56 coming from Wall Street analysts. We then move on to Equinix. Now this also has a double buy rating and a hold from Quant. We can see a P to FFO at 33, which does look fairly costly with a yield of 2.1%. This is one that we have been discussing since its 52 week lows of $678. And we can see over the last year, it is up around 6%. Over the last 10 years, another significant outperformance of the S&P up 301%. Another very safe dividend score, great to see, and a rapid increase to the dividend at 25% in October. And when we do take a look at the last recession, well, no dividend paid, so no comparative data, plus 25% sales looking very strong, but pretty much an S&P return at negative 56%. In terms of dividend growth, as we said, strong last year, but also pretty strong over the last five years at 10% year on year. And we can see eight years of consecutive increases to the dividend. No surprises then, a double undervaluation signal on the yield as well as the forward P to FFO. And when we look at it, it is higher than the real estate sector. But if you have noticed, the majority of those that do trade higher do tend to have the better outperformance over the last 10 years. No surprises how they are able to essentially offer very rapid increases to the dividend. The payout is in fact below 50% every single year. And when we look at the AFFO, love to see this consistency more than doubled over the last 10 years, $36. So that is anticipated to continue over the next year. In terms of sales growth, well above the 5 to 10% every single year, 15% in 2023, so looking very good even in the more recent period. And we can see very healthy, in fact, over the last four years, 9% consistently, 7% over the next 12. We then look at these sales numerically looking very, very strong around triple over the last 10, and probably one of those that doesn't dilute your position at a very rapid rate, probably around what we see at the sector medium. We then move on to the ROIC. Now, not something I like to see in terms of a decreasing graph, at a minimum, it is at that 3%, but ideally we want to see it move upwards rather than downwards. We then get to the operating margin. Again, a little bit questionable in the fact that it has been decreasing. We want to see it rebound strongly from the 9% lows, 13% in 2023. Hopefully we can see this move back up into the 20s. 
We then take a look at the final metric, net debt to EBITDA, probably the best one we have seen today in terms of these levels, well below 5.5 year on year, 3.83 in 2023, 3.46 over the next 12 months. So definitely does show us that dividend is very safe. In fact, that dividend payout was well below 50 every single year. Now our intrinsic value at $948, when we put it through the MOS at 10%, a buy at 853 at the 15% level isn't there yet, but around $860 would be where it's at. So in today's episode, around the 10 to 15% mark, which as we can see, Wall Street giving this a buy rating with 14% upside price target of $931. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you adding to any of these? Maybe some of these are now on your watch list, or maybe for whatever reason, these aren't ones that are particularly attractive for your REIT portfolio. If you enjoyed today's episode, value was provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified as these videos drop. And don't forget to click on the pinned comment below to sign up to the free weekly newsletter. And if you're interested, come and join us in the Patreon where we do discuss our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.